Listen, you've probably seen a bunch of Viltrox reviews already from the bigger YouTubers out there. You know the one I'm talking about, right? You know, the, the cool kids, a bunch of cool kids with their cool kids hats and their cool kid beanies with their cool kid glasses and their cool kid tote bags. A bunch of cool kids. But what you haven't seen yet is a review from me. I am the one who knocks. So in today's video, I'm gonna share with you guys my full review with the Viltrox 75mm f1.2 lens for the Fujifilm X-Mount. Let's go. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's me, I'm Tung, and today we are talking about this little fella right here, this girthy, the Viltrox 75mm f1.2 for the Fujifilm X-Mount. I've been using it for over a month, month and a half, two months now, and I've been loving my time with it. I really love this lens. It's really one of the best lenses that you can get for its price. Why don't we just get started? Let's start out with what people want to know first, and that is its image quality. I love the image quality out of this lens. The bokeh at f1.2 is just lovely. The center sharpness at f1.2 is insanely sharp. And I don't think you need to stop down if you don't want to. That's how sharp it is at f1.2, especially in the center. And over the couple of months I had it, I've been enjoying the images I've produced. The 75 millimeter is roughly around 112.5 in full frame equivalent, making this a telephoto lens. And while you're shooting with it, you're gonna get some great compression and combine this with the F1.2, it gives you some bokeh that you're going to love. There are certain instances where it does look like it's gonna give you the swirly bokeh at F1.2. Some of you guys may not like this, but I do fairly enjoy it. This lens reminds me sort of like the 90 millimeter F2. It's as sharp as the 90, if not sharper than the 90 millimeter F2, but it's a little bit wider. And that can be useful for people who are operating in a limited space. This lens does shine when you have room to operate. The compression that you get makes it look very cinematic and I love that. Uh, I think what I love about this lens is how the face just fills up the frame and that's why I call it cinematic. Whenever you're watching a movie, you're always seeing the face take up about like 80 to 90% of the frame. This lens provides you with a clinical look with ultimate sharpness. During my testings, I found little to zero chromatic aberration. So you can rest assured that this lens does live up to its pro designated name. It does cause a little bit of flaring, but only you can decide whether or not you like the flares. For me, it's whatever I'm feeling. Um, it just depends on the situation, but the flare is there, so you just need to work around it. But overall, the image quality on this lens is incredible, especially for the price too, god damn. <laughs> So when I first got the lens, I said that the lens struggled a bit, sort of like the old 56mm f2, where it's slower to focus. It has this thing where it struggle and it it's not as confident. It would just, when you focus, it will overshoot and then it will come back and lock into focus. And it wasn't as snappy and confident like something like the 35 millimeter f2 from fujifilm but after downloading the lens firmware and updating it onto the lens i saw a noticeable improvement and now i don't feel that sluggish af anymore it feels a bit quicker and snappier but there are times where i did feel its struggle um, especially when i was backlighting the subject or even in like low light situations overall the autofocusing isn't bad when there is ample amount of light it does struggle in low light and it's not as instant and confident as the linear motor lenses out on the market. Let's move on to the build quality. This thing is fat as fuck. This is relatively the same weight as the 16 to 55 millimeter F2.8, but it's girthier. It has a 77 millimeter filter thread, which is insane for an APS-C lens. It also has the AF-MF toggle. It has the USB-C port on the back of the lens. This is where you're going to plug the cable in in order to update uh, the firmware when it comes when they come out with updates. But make no mistakes, this is a premium feeling lens. And if I didn't know any better, this could be a legit XF Fujifilm native lens. From its black finish, its aperture dial, and the nice weight that it has, everything about this lens screams flagship, screams pro. It screams a pro lens. I, and I did mention in my first impressions uh, videos that I really enjoyed the unboxing experience with this lens. Making an unboxing experience pleasant like that just seems to me 
to elevate this lens to a much more premium status. And it's the little things like that that makes it much more enjoyable. And look at the size difference from the 75 millimeter F1.2 versus the XF 33 millimeter F1.4 and the Voigtlander 23 millimeter F1.2. And look at how massive it is com in comparison to the other lenses. It's like you're dealing with a baby's arm at this point. <laughs> On the X-H2 and the X-H2S, I think it balances very well. But if you're going to be shooting with this lens for long hours, it's best to bring a camera strap that you, you can sling across your body. Otherwise, you're going to start feeling it in your hands within an hour of shooting. I was shooting with this lens for a couple hours and let me tell you, it was giving me hand fatigue. My hands was cramping a little bit and um, yeah, I was sort of annoyed by it. So. Something to be cautious if you're buying this lens. <laughs> this 75 millimeter is a weird focal length, which puts it in a unique position. Fuji has a 90 millimeter F2 lens and a 56 millimeter F1.2 lens. There are times where you want something longer than a 56, and there are times where you want something a little bit wider than the 90 millimeter F2. And this is where this lens comes in. And it's coming in with an f1.2 aperture so rest assured bokeh lovers you'll get your delicious creamy bokeh that you also desired and according to viltrox this lens has a professional level waterproof and dustproof structural design avoiding dust and water droplets making this lens more fearless in complex outdoor environments another thing i gotta mention is its manual focusing ring it feels a bit stiff and i'm not a fan of it so if you're a video shooter that wants to pull focus, I think you're gonna have a hard time with this lens. So putting the Viltrox lens onto the Fujifilm X-T5, you may find it to be a bit front heavy, but on something like the X-H2 or the X-H2S, it feels more balanced. And again, this is something to consider if you're planning to pick this lens up because, oh my goodness, this thing is freaking girthy and heavy. My God, you can start doing curls to it. There's, there's some weight to it and it's making my biceps work. <laughs> I guess pr con to this lens is that it has, I guess, weak. It has weak flare controls. Another thing is it's heavy. This thing is this thing by far is one of the heaviest prime lenses that I've used for the Fujifilm X mount. If you are used to the X, the F2 lenses, this thing will be freaking gigantic. In comparison and then another one is the close focusing distance in order to use this lens you're going to need space to operate and the minimum that you need to be is about 89 centimeters which is close to three feet away from your subject I wish this lens could have gotten just a little bit closer but it is what it is I guess I guess that's where they they made compromise by making this lens a more budget friendly alternative than the XF lens the XF native lenses. And besides the cons that I just mentioned, I don't think there's anything else. I think this is a great lens and absolutely worthy of its pro name. If you take the Viltrox logo out of this, you probably think this is a Fuji native glass. That's how good this lens performs. If you want ultimate image quality with great sharpness, beautiful looking shots with just great optical quality, if you're a portrait shooter, if you need that wide aperture, if you need a telephoto prime lens with great optical quality at a budget friendly price, this is priced at 549. Uh, this is coming in at a steal. The 56 millimeter F1.2 is around a thousand bucks and the 90 millimeter F2 is also around a thousand bucks. For its price and the features that it gets, this lens is punching above its weight and I'm enjoying my time with it. Let me put this back on to you guys. What are your thoughts on the 75 millimeter F1.2? Let me know down in the comment section below and I honestly can't wait to see what Viltrox does with its pro line and I can't wait to see what other lenses they produce with its pro lines. And if you're interested in this lens, I'll leave the links to them down in the description below. And guys, I'm almost at 10K subs and I'll be announcing a giveaway for two lenses once I hit 10K and I'll be giving it away to one of you guys, one of you lucky subscribers. So the faster we get to 10K, the faster I can announce this giveaway. So do me a favor and subscribe to my channel. And as always, my name is Tug and I'll see you in the next video. I love you.